I struggle with these things. I do. I find everything difficult. And I, 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 it's the little things that really I really struggle with. Like, um, I don't know if you had this. The other day, I got asked a surprise question by a cash machine. <laughs> don't know if any of you have had this. I was, it's all fine. I was going on a date, so I thought I'd go and get some money. It was all fine. And then just before giving me the money, first on the screen, it came up with a picture of Coco the monkey. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, from the Cocoa Pops, if you're not aware of him. Right? And then below that, right, it said, are you considering buying Cocoa Pops today? <laughs> right, and it gave me the options of yes or no. And obviously my first reaction was, what the fuck is going on? Because <laughs> my understanding of cash machines is they're going to do what you'd normally go into your bank to do. I don't know who's going into a bank, queuing up, getting to the front and going, hi, I need some financial advice. I've got £2.69, and I want to turn my milk chocolatey. <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> well, I will consider it, yeah? Thank you very much. Also, yes or no, what difference is that going to make? If I click yes, is it going to go, well, I hope you've got a bowl ready, cos here they fucking come. Do you want full fat milk or do you want semi skimmed? I can't handle the pressure. Because <laughs> I find cash points stressful enough as it is, I do. Like those cash points where the buttons don't quite line up with the screen. <laughs> oh my God, there is no stress in the world like that, is there? Please, God, let this be 20 quid. <laughs> if this is 40 quid, I might as well just kill myself. <laughs> Worse, if it's one of those cash points where the screen is angled so the sun is on it. You go up for 20 quid, you leave with a new pin number and a checkbook in the post. <laughs> do I press cancel? Do I press clear? I've got no idea on the difference. No one gives me a car back trying to force it back in. People going, piss off, mate. It's not winner stays on. <laughs> I'm already stressed as well when I'm at a cash point. Because I've already had to stand there for 10 seconds, unable to put my card in, because it's still thanking the guy. <laughs> That's already fucked off. <laughs> Who is hanging around for that? <laughs> Who's going, I've got my card, I've got my cash, hold on, guys. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> it's been an absolute bloody pleasure doing business with you, actually, yeah. <laughs> Manners cost nothing, see you later. <laughs> I'll tell you the most point, it's not the most pointless question, not just on a cash point, on anything. So when you put your card into a cash point, it says, um, please be aware this cash point is out of receipts. Do you want to continue? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> don't know anyone who's going, no, no, I don't. Because I'm only here for the memories. Unless I can get a memento, I'm going to get my Coco Pops elsewhere. <laughs> I don't understand these childish things. Like I went, I went to a, a pub the other day, one of those pubs where they've got board games in the pub for you to play. Well, they've gone, the atmosphere in here is so shit, you could hold a chess tournament. That kind of... <laughs> when in there, Cluedo, Monopoly, I haven't played Cluedo, we ended up playing Cluedo, I haven't played it in years. I had to read the instructions. Cluedo has the worst storyline to anything ever. You read the instructions to Cluedo, it says, you've been invited to a party, and one of the six guests, six guests. <laughs> that is the shittest party <laughs> I've ever been invited to. If I turned up at a party and there were six guests and the first person I spoke to was a reverend. <laughs> I'm no Pete Doherty, but this is fucking lame. <laughs> also, this is a party where one of the rules is no one is allowed in the same room as anyone else at the same time. <laughs> What am I going to do? Bash through the walls. I'm not Ron DMC versus Aerosmith. <laughs> also, who is holding a party at a house that has nine rooms but no toilet? <laughs> I need a piss one. I'm afraid you're going to have to go in the billiard room. That is the best we've got. <laughs> then, as if it isn't bad enough, at this party there is a murder. Although, to be honest, at this party I'm not ruling out suicide. <laughs> I don't know about you, if I was at a party and there was a murder, I would call the police. <laughs> I wouldn't go, hey, guys, fuck the police, we're going to try and solve this one ourselves. <laughs> Even though we know one of us did it. <laughs> These are people that, when trying to solve a murder, look at a corpse with a bullet in its head and go, well, I'll tell you what did that. 
either a revolver or a candlestick. <laughs> or a lead pipe. Who is bringing lead pipe to a party in the first place? <laughs> Who's going, oh, you said whiskey, I heard lead pipe, my mistake. I don't need a storyline on a board game. No one's playing other board games going, well, I would play, but what is my motivation? <laughs> I mean, unless you can tell me why the hippos are so hungry in the first place, I'm not getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there a storyline on Buckaroo I don't know about? I don't know what to explain a situation where we're in a field putting random objects on a wild mule <laughs> till it kicks you in the face and then you start again. <laughs> They have Monopoly as well. Monopoly in a pub. Who is going to a pub for five days? <laughs> Not the worst place for Monopoly. I got on a train recently. On the table, they had a laminated Monopoly board. Go, look, if there's going to be delays, just fucking tell us. <laughs> Also, that's not much help to me, because I'm not going to lie to you, I haven't brought all the bits for Monopoly. <laughs> it's not like I was going train journey. Well, phone, wallet, tiny top hat, I'm ready, let's do this. <laughs> they said, oh, no, you get the bits from the buffet carriage. I said, they can't even make me a cup of tea in the buffet carriage. <laughs> All they can do, get me to smelt my own hat. <laughs> I, I incidentally, no idea what the storyline of Monopoly could be, but seemingly, I'm a tiny dog who repeatedly wins beauty contests. <laughs> On his birthday, demands £10 off everyone he can see, but then bankrupts himself to stay in a hotel even though he owns four houses on the next street. <laughs> well, that makes no sense. I wouldn't even leave my house if I was him, because every time I leave my house, I keep getting thrown in jail for fuck all. <laughs> What's the police's problem? I've been thrown in jail for nothing. There's been a murder at a party. They haven't turned up to that. <laughs> board games in the pub. They didn't just have board games, books as well. They had like shelves of uh, classic hardback novels. What is this? Water spoons? I mean, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> also, who is that for? Who is going in and going, oh, finally, I can combine my twin interests of Charles Dickens and Bacardi Breezers? <laughs> I've just been on a two week bender. What do you get up to? I read Martin Chuzzlewit, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Two curry clubs, it was the best fortnight of my life. <laughs> it's genuinely, I mean, if I'm drinking, I don't want to read. If it's 11 pm and I'm hammered, never to go, right, let's hit the fucking library, let's do this. <laughs> Wake up the next day going, bloody hell, I knew out for a short story. I read three novels. I am absolutely mental when I get going. <laughs> Books, board games in a pub, it wasn't even a good pub. Was, you, you know, it's not a good pub when it's one of those pubs where. You go into the toilets, they've got those toilet seats that don't even go the full way round. <laughs> they've got a little bit missing at the front, like a horseshoe. <laughs> How much of a saving is that? <laughs> How badly is your business going? They go, well, I don't think we'll afford a full toilet seat. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with four-fifths. <laughs> already made the saving by not having the bottom bit on the cubicle door. <laughs> if there's one time I want a full door, it's when I'm having a shit. <laughs> that is when I want privacy to be at a max. Never mind sat there behind a full door going, well, this is lonely, isn't it? <laughs> when someone can see my trainers, that perk things right up. Because <laughs> I struggle with technology, I do. Like, I've got an iPhone, I thought that was going to improve my life. It has not. I mean, there are apps on my iPhone I'm yet to use. I'm yet to use the Compass app. I mean, I don't know about you, before I had an iPhone, I wasn't going, bloody hell, another night out. We'll have to take a separate phone and compass with me. <laughs> I mean, I love making a phone call in a northwesterly direction, but this is taking the piss. <laughs> Little tip, right? If you're in a situation where you need to use a compass, your iPhone will have died fucking hours ago. <laughs> Because my iPhone has the lifespan of a moth. <laughs> my life is now just me going into rooms and looking for plugs. That is all it is. <laughs> I can't make a phone call without having it plugged into the wall. Basically, I've gone back to having a landline. <laughs> we didn't have technology like this when I was growing up in Devon. When I was growing up in Devon, the most advanced technology I had 
was if I held a buttercup underneath another child's chin. <laughs> if it reflected back, then I knew they liked butter. <laughs> I mean, if you're that close, just ask. <laughs> no one's keeping that information to themselves, are they? No one's going, Steve, do you like butter? Not telling you that, mate. <laughs> That's a secret. Taking that one with me to the grave. <laughs> no one's being interrogated about that at Guantanamo Bay, are they? Okay, he's not cracky under questioning. Fetch the buttercup, we'll get this out of him. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got him tied down with a daisy chain. He's going fucking nowhere. <laughs> How long has he been here? Well, let me just check by blowing the seeds off this dandelion. <laughs> <sighs> Since one o'clock. <laughs> I mean, genuinely, the most advanced thing I owned when I was a child was my coat. <laughs> it was because I had one of those coats where for the first six months, I didn't realise I had a hood. Because <laughs> it zipped into the collar. What is that for? When am I ever going to need to zip my hood back into the collar? Just go a formal occasion. Well, let me just zip my hood back into the collar <laughs> of my shell suit jacket. <laughs> just trying to lose someone in a chase, nip down alleyway, zip your hood in, come out, then go, where the fuck's he gone? <laughs> oh, no, it looked like that guy, but the guy I was following had a hood. <laughs> what was the hood like? The thinnest hood I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> My button's undone. <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, that's the kind of technology I needed when I was a child, right? Oh, it's actually quite difficult to do up one hand. How, how was the DVD? Didn't really get the bit about the buttons. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was Camille O'Sullivan doing burlesque at one point. <laughs> that couple sat there going, oh, at last, some flesh. <laughs> Oh, my God, now I'm paranoid. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have technology now. Like, like, technology has got out of control, hasn't it? It has. Like, you know, it's, you've got shirts that can't button up, but now, have you tried... Have you, tr <laughs> have you tried signing for a parcel recently? I mean, that is useless technology. That used to be fine with a pen and a piece of card. Now they've got this digital screen and this plastic stick. And all you can do is a kind of zigzag up and down line. <laughs> There's no relation to any signature that's ever existed. Is that your signature? No! <laughs> Looks like the mark of Zorro. <laughs> is anyone checking this at the post office? I've got bad news. Zorro is back. <laughs> and he's signing for every parcel in the United Kingdom. <laughs> Core strength. You've been working out, not just sleeping on a single bed, I'm ripped. 